Hello and welcome to this special edition of Buncombe Monthly called Buncombe Yearly, where we're going to recap all the great things that happened in Buncombe County throughout the year 2015. We're going to talk about the Family Justice Center, school updates, pop-up markets, Veterans Treatment Court, and a whole lot more. I'm coming to you in today's episode from Lake Julian Park, where throughout the entire month of December, they're going to have their Festival of Lights. I'm actually sitting where Santa's going to be sitting tonight during their opening walkthrough party. If you're watching this after December 31st, don't worry, you can catch the Lake Julian Festival of Lights next year. The first thing we're going to talk about in this year-end wrap-up is the announcement and the beginning of construction for the new Family Justice Center that's going to open at 35 Woodfin Street, middle next year. As part of a broader, coordinated community response to domestic and sexual violence, Buncombe County is opening the Family Justice Center, bringing together law enforcement, governmental agencies, and nonprofits to provide comprehensive services to adult victims of violence in a one-stop location. The new building, which is currently being renovated at 35 Woodfin Street, will house representatives from the Buncombe County Sheriff's Office and Asheville Police Department's Domestic and Sexual Violence Units, Helpmate, Our Voice, and many local domestic and sexual service providers. The five focus areas of the coordinated community response of the Family Justice Center include a cross-system dialogue, community engagement, survivor services, high-risk interventions, and offender accountability. This model hopes not only to provide a more supportive experience for victims, but it will increase the efficiency in service provision, reduce victim recantation, increase prosecution of offenders, and ultimately reduce crime. If you or someone you know is currently experiencing domestic or sexual violence, call the Helpmate 24-hour hotline at 828-254-0516. You can learn more at helpmate.org. For more information on connecting you to resources that offer care, call 211 or visit nc211.org. Well, for the past 15 years or so, Buncombe County hemlock trees have been subject to a predator called the woolly adelgid. The woolly adelgid simply attaches itself to the hemlock trees and sucks all the sap out, essentially killing the trees. While chemical treatments are available to help single trees, it's not going to help the entire forest population from this predator. So what can we do? Well, this year, Buncombe County released a natural predator to the woolly adelgid in the form of a beetle to save our trees. It's important to save the hemlocks for several reasons, and I want to give you the first reason is there's no other tree that can exist under shade like hemlocks can. Not only that, so that's number one. The second thing is they are God's greatest gift to the mountains in terms of air conditioning and clean water and trout and birds and deer. Um, wood thrushes only nest in hemlocks where I am. A hemlock is a keystone ecological species. And by keystone, it means that the whole in ecosystem depends on that tree and builds out from there. You're not going to be able to spray your way out of any pest problem. For example, I went to Grandfather Golf and Country Club, and they haven't put a drop of pesticide on their trees now in eight years. And their trees are gorgeous, and they're covered with beetles, so it works. We're not guessing anymore. The chemicals can buy us time in a stopgap manner but biologically, the only thing that is going to save these trees on an area-wide basis are these beetles. We're trying to implement a long-term sustainable control for the adelgid. You know, nobody wants to be in the business of, of putting chemicals on hemlock trees for the rest of their life. So you know, we started uh, 20 years ago trying to investigate you know, what we could do as a long-term sustainable 
control for the adelgid. So we've looked at predatory insects, we've looked at, at insect pathogens, we're looking at, at all kinds of, and anything we can think of, you know, to introduce a, a check and balance into this system. Because we've introduced a pest without any of its natural checks and balances. So, you know, it, it's like the rabbits in, in Australia. You know, they've taken over because there's not a natural predator there. So we're we're trying to insert some of those. And the one we're working with uh, predominantly right now is from uh, Pacific Northwest, so it's from North America, but it's Laracobis nigrinus. And we've been releasing it for uh, more than 15 years and got establishment in at least 75 or 80% of our sites. And uh, we hope that, you know, that along with, uh, you know, some fluctuations in temperature and with, you know, some other predators that may or may not, you know, pan out that we're still studying that we can you know, insert some checks and balances into this, this out-of-balance ecosystem now. So if you're interested in an opportunity for volunteer work in Buncombe County, in 2015, the Trauma Intervention Program came that are currently looking for volunteers. You're trained to go on actual 911 calls and give assistance to the victims of crimes. So if that sounds like something that's right up your alley, why not sign up for their next training? TIP volunteers are the angels that show up at the time of crisis. TIP volunteers are called by police and fire. They arrive within 20 minutes and they just walk a family through the worst day of their lives. I was called to sit out with a young, about 12 or 13 year old whose mother was murdered. He came home from school, got off the school bus, walked into his house and saw his mom on the floor dead, so they called me out to come and sit with him and provide that support. I've also been to hospitals, I've been to um, people's houses, to the scene of the crime, anywhere and everywhere that that person happens to be. The training academy will teach you everything you need to know. Many times people say, I would love to do that, but I'm just not sure that I would know what to do. So I would say, come out, go through the training. Most volunteers, including myself, will say that you get more out of it than you give. The volunteering is extremely rewarding. I think a lot of times I've been on calls and I leave thinking like, well, I don't really know if I did much. But when you're about to leave and you're saying goodbye to them and they say, thank you for being here, it makes you feel rewarded leaving having known that you might have not felt like you were a tremendous help, but you were. The Trauma Intervention Program of Western North Carolina is now coming together. We are recruiting volunteers. So if you think that you are the type of person that would like to help citizens in crisis, we would like to talk to you. You can get more information at www.tipofwnc.org or check out the information on the screen. We would love to talk with you. So a big event that happened in 2015 is longtime commissioner and current chairman David Gant announced that he is not seeking re-election for the Board of Commissioners. He first joined the board in 1996, so next year he's going to retire after 20 years of service. Today I want to announce that I will not be a candidate for Buncombe County Commission chair or any other office next year. I, um, I will not be, uh, I will finish my term. Uh, my term runs through December of next year but I will not be a uh, candidate um, and I wanted people to know this at uh, the same time. I'm not sick, I'm not mad, I'm not uh, any, uh, any political issue here, any ethic issue that I know about. <laughs> uh, I just want to spend more time with my wife, Cherise Gant, 36 years. I want to um, spend more time with my law practice and my children. Gant has been on the board for 20 years since 2008 as chairman. There are three measures of success that I want to talk about today. Um, did you keep your promises? Did you do what you said you are going to do? Did you meet your goals? Did you leave the county in better position than it was before you came? And then finally, I think probably equally important is did you treat people with respect and courtesy and dignity along the way? Gant reviewed the top 10 achievements of the board during his tenure, including enacting a steep slope ordinance and zoning overlay for the Blue Ridge Parkway, the construction of 11 new schools, 
permanently preserving over 6,000 acres of county farmland, creation of the first perpetual energy landfill in the country, a new $25 million LED certified county courthouse, a AAA bond rating, the creation of greenways, pools, libraries, and community centers in each part of the county, a countywide zoning and planning ordinance, and creation of over 6,000 jobs and a strong economy. In 2015 and every year, the Western North Carolina Regional Air Quality Agency hosts an ozone kickoff event to tell you about our current state of air quality here in our region and to let you know when the ozone forecasts begin. They also host a Clean Air Excellence Award every year where they nominate businesses, organizations, and individuals who have made a great impact in improving our region's air quality. Today is our annual attempt to brief the media uh, and uh, the public uh, and community leaders on what are our air pollution issues and um, what are the trends? Are, is it getting better or is it getting worse? The good news is that air pollution is um, decreasing. Uh, the air quality has improved quite a bit over the last 10 years due to emission um, programs, emission reduction programs from local, state, and federal uh, entities, um, private industries like the utilities, and our cars and trucks getting cleaner. Mainly in recent years we've been concerned with ozone or ground level ozone as it's known and also fine particles. And due to all the reductions in pollution from our cars and trucks getting cleaner and from the scrubbers that have been put on the power plants, we've seen great improvements in the levels of fine particles and ground level ozone. They've been coming down quite a bit over time. And that actually impacts our visibility as well because these fine particles are mostly sulfate particles that come from combustion of coal are very efficient at scattering light. That's why in the summertime you may remember seeing hazy views of the mountains. Sometimes you couldn't even see Mount Pisgah from downtown Asheville. But in recent years that visibility has really improved and we believe that is due to the scrubbers that have been put on the power plants. Since 2004, the Western North Carolina Regional Air Quality Agency has been giving special recognition to local businesses and organizations who have gone above and beyond air quality rules and regulations. The awards are given to organizations that implement voluntary, innovative programs that reduce air pollution in our region. This year, they presented the Clean Air Excellence Awards to the Biltmore Estate and Eaton Corporation. We're here today to receive the Clean Air Excellence Award. I am the Sustainability Manager for the Biltmore Estate, and the reason we received it is our ongoing efforts to limit our footprint. We're using renewable energy, and we're using clean burning fuels. Uh, we started this process um, quite some time ago. We invested in putting in 1.7 megawatts of solar energy in two years. Uh, 2011 we did 1.2 megawatts and in 2012 we did an additional 500 kilowatts. We are also growing um, canola on the estate with the hopes of turning it into food grade oil that we can then reuse and turn into biofuel. Eaton Corporation's Arden Plant, a manufacturer for power management products, was also recognized by the Regional Air Quality Agency for their pollution saving initiatives. Sustainability has really been part of Eaton's core uh, from corporate and also Arden has been dear and true. We do a lot of sustainability projects anywhere from waste reduction to lowering our energy emissions, uh, lowering our water consumption, and all sorts throughout the plant. We took all of our manufacturing lighting, about 375,000 square feet, and switched them all from fluorescent to LED lighting. Also using our own products, which have shown a savings cost of 66.7% for the past year savings reduction. If you're looking to add a new four-legged member to your family, look no further than the Asheville Humane Society. They have plenty of adoptable cats and dogs and puppies like Freya here who are in need of a good home. Now when you adopt from the Asheville Humane Society, not only are you saving a life, but all of the pets have been spayed, neutered, received their shots, and some basic training. <laughs> The Asheville Humane Society is dedicated to promoting the compassionate treatment of animals in our community through education, sheltering, and adoption. Come visit the Asheville Humane Society's Adoption Center 
at 14 Forever Friend Lane, just south of the farmer's market, to see all of the wonderful animals we have for adoption. Elsa is a two-year-old black and white domestic short hair looking for a place to chill out and call home. Buddy is a six-year-old male terrier mix with lots of energy and a playful personality. Fabio is a three-month-old multicolored domestic long hair who is friendly with other cats. Jenny is a one-year-old female terrier pit bull mix who loves to hike fast and frequently. Mycroft is a three-year-old domestic short hair mix who is FIV positive and loves to meow. Lucky is a three-year-old male terrier pit bull retriever mix. He loves to give kisses. Metis is a six-year-old female domestic short hair who's very friendly and inquisitive. Crom is a one-year-old male terrier pit bull mix who is social, friendly, and energetic. Greta is a three-year-old black and white domestic long hair who might seem shy, but once she gets to know you, will curl up in your lap. Freya is a three-month-old female Australian Shepherd Golden Retriever mix. She is the sweetest dog in the world. To reach the Asheville Humane Society, you can call us at 828-761-2001, or to view all of our available animals for adoption, visit our website at AshevilleHumane.org. Clean Up Candler held a community meeting earlier this year with local and state representatives, the Department of Transportation, and representatives from many local businesses and nonprofits to talk about the challenges facing the Candler community, to talk about volunteering options, and for a Q&A with the Department of Transportation on future transportation needs. So I really see this as an organi organizational meeting to address the concerns of our community. Um, they've been kind of blowing up on Facebook and, and taking off, really, um, just like our Inca Jets, right? <laughs> I'm very pleased that this panel has taken notice of your efforts and your voices and your ability to come together. This meeting will basically have three components. Um, at, at the end of the meeting, at the close of the meeting, we're going to have a community opportunity fair. You see tables around the room. It'll be your opportunity to come and ask your individual questions to the folks that are here to, to help us. Um, the panelists will also be roaming around and, and, and available for your questions as well. Um, we'll also have the, the COPS presentation from Van Duncan and Duncan County Sheriff's Department and a panel discussion of the community's concerns and questions that have been out there. When we looked at coming back to Canada, what we knew we had were some issues around some mobile home parks. We still had a few B&Es, but they're down well over half from what they were from January 1st of 2014 to today's date, from January 1st of 15 to today's date. So we know that we're traveling in the right direction. So we'll still be looking at B&Es and, and ready to take y'all's information. What we know is a lot of those residential B&Es and business B&Es are linked to street level drugs. Now, I think about anybody in here can tell you where we started about two and a half years ago out here. We're in a whole lot better shape than where we were. The, the first thing to speak to is there is a new interchange plan is um, to, to add um, some ability for folks to get off of Interstate 40. Um, it is at the Liberty Road um, where the existing Liberty Road um, overpass is now. Um, it, it, the current schedule we have for the project it will be for right-of-way acquisition to begin in 2019. It's, it's very challenging to um, get a new interstate, uh, an interchange approved on the interstate now, working with our partners with the Federal Highway Administration. We've worked through those issues, um, and so, and then funding is an issue. Um, we were just recently, in the past year, all projects across the state, uh, major highway transportation projects were reprioritized. And we were very um, fortunate in Buncombe County to get a number of projects funded that very well could have not been. And, and that was one of them out of what was called the statewide tier. Um, so to help with that, I understand that's um, not as quickly as a lot of folks would like to see, but um, there's a number, number of projects that didn't actually make the, um, the, the cut across the state that they have no um, hope of seeing those in the near future. Well, they should call 2015 the year of construction here in Buncombe County. We've got new county buildings, we have new schools, new hotels, but the one thing we want to talk to you about is the new Asheville Middle School. It's going to be opening next year and they had their topping off ceremony earlier this year. Elected officials and school board members recently gathered at the site for the new Asheville Middle School for a topping off ceremony. 
Part of the ceremony involved placing a signed beam into the classroom wing of the construction. Everyone from county commissioners, school board members, students, teachers, visitors, and even construction workers signed the beam. The programming and designing for the new $41 million facility began back in 2013 and is scheduled for completion in the summer of 2016. Buncombe County Board of Commissioners approved the funding for the project in 2015, along with construction for a new Isaac Dixon Elementary School. The new Asheville Middle School plans to be open for its first semester in the fall 2016 school year. It will feature everything you expect in a middle school and more. You'll have your new auditorium, gymnasium, and classrooms featuring new technologies. Technologies like wireless access, tablets and mobile devices, interactive projection displays, and learner response systems. It will also feature a state-of-the-art media center, roof garden, team breakout spaces, comfortable common areas, science labs, and plenty of exploratory space for everything from technology education labs, art rooms, music rooms, and even business labs. Stay up to date on new additions to the school by visiting newashevillemiddleschool.com. In July of 2015, Buncombe County introduced a new type of court called Veterans Treatment Court. Now, Veterans Treatment Court helps our local military personnel by focusing on the underlying causes of their criminality and helping with rehabilitation and treatment rather than jail time. Now, they held an opening ceremony earlier this year with Superior Court Judge Marvin Pope. Veterans Treatment Court is a non-adversarial uh, treatment uh, deferred prosecution program which has uh, really gained interest in the United States. In December of 2012, there were 168. Last uh, uh, June 30th, there were 216 in the United States. Veterans Court is an idea that was created by uh, Judge Robert Russell in Buffalo, New York in January 2008. He saw the need for veterans uh, that were uh, involved with the criminal justice system. They needed additional help and they needed specialized treatment because of the uh, injuries they had sustained uh, in Afghanistan and Iraq. This has resulted in the uh, veterans uh, uh, resorting to self-medication and then they become involved with the criminal justice system and he saw a need uh, to um, uh, correct that or to help these veterans. There's more than 19,000 veterans in Buncombe County, North Carolina, not counting the outlying counties which the uh, Veterans Medical Administration here in, in Oteen uh, helps out and so it's a very integral part of the Veterans Treatment Court. Last year we had 168 veterans come through the Buncombe County uh, detention facility. So there is a need to attend to the uh, veterans. Uh, so the district attorney uh, and the veteran treatment court coordinator uh, check uh, to see who has been arrested and see if they qualify for veterans treatment court. Veterans treatment court in Buncombe County is able to handle all misdemeanors is able to handle uh, uh, low-level felonies. We do not handle any violent felonies such as armed robberies. We do not handle any type of sex offense cases. And we also get the consent of the victim for the veteran to be involved with Veterans Treatment Court so they're a participant in the uh, rehabilitation of the veteran. This court relies on the veteran's military experience. Uh, in the military, you are subjected to very strict discipline. You have a regimented schedule. You are supervised 24 hours a day, seven days a week. So we take advantage of that by giving this veteran a very strict uh, regimen that he has to follow. He's got to go to 12-step programs. He's got to uh, look for a job. He's got to go to education programs. He's got to receive training to get him back on his feet. This year, Buncombe County Health and Human Services, along with many community partners, created the Pop-Up Market Program. The Pop-Up Market Program is designed to distribute fresh, healthy, and perishable foods to communities who need them most. Pop-Up Markets are, um, it's kind of like a fresh market where we set up tables and tablecloths and beautiful flowers, and we get uh, our produce from Manna, 
and this is produce at no cost to the people that we serve. And we set that up like a fresh market, and we're able to give the people in the community free food. Not only free food, but we also provide a community resource while we're there. And that's important because we ask the community what people need, and if they say we need information on Helpmate or on track or mission services, we're able to have those services there at the pop-up. They're important because we're able to provide free food to people. There is a great need in this community. Um, for example, we work in Barley Arms, and I talked to uh, some of the community members there, and some people were having to make a choice to either buy medications or food. Well, we're glad to have it here. You know, we've been working on this for quite some time, and it's good for the community. You know, it comes in handy, especially like later on during the month when they have no food, you know, so it helps the community a lot. Now a great collaboration that took place in 2015 was when local law enforcement, Health and Human Services, and Mission Hospital all got together for a pledge on the new Child Advocacy Center. The CAC, is a, there's a national accreditation that's been around probably a good 20 years now, and so um, there's about 10 components that they're looking at uh, that you're required to do, and we're in the process of trying to get those all up and ready. Um, our plan is to have our full accreditation application ready by March of 2016 um, and to get it in um, within the next six to nine months. Um, so some of those pieces are already in place in the county. Uh, Mission Hospital provides the child medical exams and the forensic interviews because they work with other CACs that are actually in counties surrounding us that are that are accredited now. And we're working on other pieces that are mental health, um, uh, family advocacy, um, also looking at the multidisciplinary team, which is a huge piece of the Child Advocacy Center, where um, all the key players kind of come together to discuss and review all cases of abuse and neglect. So you're talking about law enforcement, both the sheriff and the Asheville PD and the other municipalities. And, and there's about seven municipalities in Buncombe County. And then you have um, uh, medical from Mission Hospital, you have mental health, you have advocacy, and then DHHS uh, is the Child Protective Services. Those are the required components for an MDT. It doesn't mean that we don't bring other key players in, uh, guardian items office, other mental health providers, other agencies that might be working with the family because the key about a CAC is is having um, all those services readily available to these families so we can respond quicker. In 2014 and 2015, the Buncombe County's Enough anti-domestic violence campaign really spread the message that this is not a crime that is accepted in our community. We have brought you all together uh, to share some not just one piece of good news, but two pieces of good news. Because of the leadership and the willingness of Buncombe County and what we have been able to demonstrate in, for us investing in this work, investing in it first, the North Carolina Governor's Crime Commission has announced that they will invest approximately $1.4 million to increase the availability of services to victims in Buncombe County over the next two years. Okay, that is our applause. That's, that, okay, one comma four, zero, 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 comma, zero, zero, zero. Yes, and, uh, and with this funding, uh, and this, it, this part is just so exciting to me too. This funding and um, an investment, Buncombe County gets to make it in the nonprofit partners and we'll be able to directly and immediately help victims, help the victims escape abuse, access counseling, access legal services, advocacy, and all the other supports that they are gonna need to rebuild their lives. This grant will help us serve clients quickly and as we spread the message that domestic violence is not tolerated in our community. Do you know what the number one crime is here in Buncombe County? Well, now that it's shopping season, it's a great time to remind you. So we here at BCTV put together a short little video to help keep yourself and your property safe.
We have a lot of shopping that we have to do today. My feet are tired just thinking about it. I hear you. Honey, can you believe that the number one crime in Buncombe County is people getting their cars broken into? Are you serious? I can't believe that. It's true. People leave their doors unlocked and their valuables in plain sight. It's funny that people actually have to be reminded to lock their doors. It's so dull, right? I know. Ooh, I like that jacket. Thank you. You know, I even saw an ad on TV the other day reminding people to lock their cars. I mean, there's no broken windows or anything. Oh, an iPad. People are just going around seeing what doors are locked and unlocked. Exactly. I guess people are just rushing around too much and not thinking. I wonder what a good way to remind them would be. I guess they have to happen to them before they can learn their lesson. Shopping's hard. I know. Do you have any wrapping paper? No, nope. do you? No, I don't. I'll check over there and you'll check over here. Okay. Hello, this is Sheriff Van Duncan. And during this holiday season, we want to take the opportunity to remind everybody that when you're out shopping and you have gifts in the car, please take time to secure those in the trunk or try not to leave them in the vehicle if you can. 80% of the vehicle break-ins we see happen to cars that are unlocked. Please help us continue to cut down on this type of theft in Buncombe County by being alert, aware, and locking your vehicles. Well, now it's time to keep an eye out for December's Mountains Most Wanted. Gregory Justin Dale is wanted for possession of drug paraphernalia, possession of a Schedule II controlled substance, and possession with intent to manufacture, sell, and deliver a controlled substance. Dale is a white male who is six foot one and weighs 190 pounds. He has brown hair and gray eyes. His last known address, 2 Kappa Loop, Black Mountain. Brooklyn Megan Holland is wanted for resisting public officers and communicating threats. Holland is a white female who is five foot four and weighs 120 pounds. She has black hair and hazel eyes. Her last known address, 12 Hidden Valley Court, Candler. If you know the location of any of the mounts most wanted, you could receive a cash reward. All you have to do is email tips at buncombecounty.org or you can call Crime Stoppers at 828-255-5050. With your help, we can continue to make Buncombe County a safer place to live, work, and play. Buncombe County wants to help you be prepared when a disaster strikes. So our EMS, Sheriff, and Public Relations Department have all adopted Nixle. So when a disaster strikes, be prepared. It's as simple as sending a text. Have you heard? Buncombe County is now using a new emergency alert system, Nixle. Simply text BC Alert to 888-777 to have updates sent straight to your phone. Now you can be prepared when disaster strikes. 2015 saw a lot of changes here in Buncombe County in terms of county offices moving. Everything from Veterans Affairs, Register of Deeds Office, Cooperative Extension, Air Quality, and much more are all in new locations now. The county's Veterans Assistance Office and the county vital records are now located at 199 College Street, with parking available in the county parking garage at 164 College Street in downtown Asheville across from the courthouse. The Office of Cooperative Extension is now located at 49 Mount Carmel Road, Suite 20. The Register of Deeds Office is now open at 205 College Street, with parking also available in the county parking deck at 164 College Street.
Finally, WNC air quality offices are now located at 125 South Lexington Avenue, Suite 101. The entrance is on Hilliard Avenue in between Church Street and South Lexington Avenue. For more information about any of the county office moves, you can visit buncombecounty.org. Well, thank you for watching the 2015 year-end roundup here in Buncombe County. Now, BCTV covers all of the events throughout the year, so if you want to hear about these great events as they happen, make sure to stay tuned. If you want to watch this episode again to hear all of this great information, visit buncombecounty.org slash YouTube where we post all of our videos online from BCTV, or you can just visit buncombecounty.org slash BCTV to see our schedule of events and all of the great shows we have coming up. Thank you for watching and see you in 2016, Buncombe County.